Hello everybody. My name is Jonas Auda and on behalf of my colleagues Niels Verheinen, Sven Meyer and Stefan Schneegas, I'm going to present Flyables, haptic input devices for virtual reality using quadcopters. Virtual reality offers a window into digitally created immersive worlds. Mostly users interact with these worlds using standard controllers. These controllers provide limited haptic feedback which often does not match the expectations of the user. While researchers enable VR users to experience specific VR content through specialized devices, they cannot serve as a general interaction tool as they are designed for specific use cases. To overcome this issue, a number of body-worn systems have been proposed. These, however, have to be worn even if they are not needed. Passive props provide matching haptic feedback, but are non-interactive. Redirection techniques are needed to steer a VR user towards such props. Further, they provide no counter forces. To address these challenges, we introduce flyables, flying haptic input devices for virtual reality using quadcopters. The core idea of flyables is to provide a set of well-known 3D printed input devices mounted on quadcopters. These input devices are represented in VR by virtual counterparts. The Flyables Toolkit already comes with five well-known user interface elements, which can be 3D printed and attached to quadcopters. Currently, the Flyables Toolkit contains a button, knob, joystick, slider and a 3D mouse to enable a wide variety of input possibilities. For each of them, we designed the virtual representation and a physical drone attachment. Our five input elements look and work as follows. The button can be used to provide discrete one-time input events. The knob allows one to rotate target objects around one axis. The joystick allows input with three degrees of freedom. Through the slider, translations in one dimension can be realized. And the 3D mouse can be used to translate objects in 3D space. We showcase the Flyables Toolkit in a user study with 12 participants. Therefore, we developed four different scenes and corresponding tasks that should be solved using flyables. In the first scene, our participants had to stow away rocks using a remote-controlled crane. Our participants used a joystick and a button to control the crane. The joystick was used to steer the crane sideways, the button to move the crane up and down to pick up the rocks. In a car showroom, our participants had to find three price tags on a car. To find the tags, the participants could use the knob to rotate the car and the button to open and close the doors of the car. In a molecule comparison exercise, our participants compared one molecule to four other molecules. They had to find out if they are the same or not. Therefore, they could use the knob to rotate the molecule and a 3D mouse to translate a molecule in 3D space. Last, we developed a piloting scenario. In this scenario, the participants had to hit five targets in the air with the aircraft. The participants steered the aircraft using the joystick to steer sideways and a slider to control the speed. We used these four scenes to evaluate the Flyball's toolkit. Therefore, we invited 12 participants. 5 female, 7 male and none other. Our participants were aged from 17 to 32 years with an average age of 24.5 years. All participants stated that they are right-handed and 9 of the participants used VR before. In our study we used the following conditions. Each participant solved the tasks in all four VR scenes once using flyables and once using state-of-the-art VR controllers. Our study followed a within-subject design and we counterbalanced the scene and input using Latin Square. In the following, we present the results of the user study. We measured the task completion time for each scene and each input. Almost always, controllers were faster than flyables. The only exception here is the car showroom where participants were faster when using flyables. Overall, we found that flyables were slower than VR controllers. We also measured the body movement of our participants. 
Here, we almost always observed a higher physical movement when participants were using flyables compared to VR controllers. Again, the only exception is the car showroom. To assess the presence, our participants filled out a breaths questionnaire. Overall, the VR controllers scored higher than flyables. However, for quality of interface and haptics, flyables scored higher. Two of the scores were significantly different. These are possibility to act and self-evaluation of performance. In both, standard VR controllers scored a higher value. We also gathered qualitative feedback from our participants. Our participants enjoyed using flyables. Here, one participant appreciated that one can move around like in everyday life using flyables. Also, participants stated that they felt more immersed while using flyables, especially from a haptics point of view. Also, participants stated that controllers are well known to them and therefore are easier to use. When we compare flyables to state-of-the-art controllers, we found that our participants solved the task faster using controllers and that controllers provided a more precise input compared to flyables. But our participants stated that the mapping of the actions to the button is arbitrary. In contrast, flyables communicate their usage and provide matching haptic feedback. Further, they increase physical movement. To improve the flyables toolkit in the future, we extracted future research challenges. These challenges include additional force feedback and anchoring in the air through specifically designed drones and software controllers. Such controllers could overtake the controlling of the flyables when the system detects that specific counter forces are needed. Also, we envision approaches to reuse a limited set of drones for multiple virtual objects. As drones can crash easily during interaction, we imagine drones to automatically restart and position themselves after a crash without the knowledge of the VR user. Last, we envision the creation and exploration of novel UI elements and interaction opportunities. For example, a thrust lever for accelerating an aircraft to further match the expected haptic feedback. Such elements could be added to the Flyables toolkit to widen its application. To summarize, we presented the Flyables toolkit, which uses quadcopters with 3D printed attachments to provide haptic input devices in virtual reality. In a user study, we compared Flyables to state-of-the-art VR controllers. We found that while controllers are easier to use and more precise, flyables enable a fun and enjoyable interaction with VR content. To improve the flyables toolkit, we outlined future research challenges that could help to make flyables more applicable. This concludes our presentation. Now I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.